Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 3 In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the Dingo LMG. This one maybe gets even less love than the BRM. This game's just all about that 48 Dredge and Gorgon, but the Dingo is definitely not a bad weapon, and it's not a bad LMG, and it has a couple of unique things about it that none of the other LMGs can do or compete with. But for now, let's start off with the damage, same as we always do in any In-Depth episode. It'll deal 30 damage up close, and then at very long ranges, it'll decrease down to 22 damage, giving it the lowest damage in class. It actually deals less damage per shot than the 48 Dredge, which is kind of sad. You'd figure that would be the low damage one given how fast it shoots and the burst nature and all that. But no, the lowest damage SMG, uh, not SMG, LMG in the game is actually the Dingo. What this means for you is that it is four or five shots to kill depending on your range, but it's almost always going to be four shots to kill because like the BRM, it has an absurdly long maximum damage range or four shot kill range in this instance instance, which is 127 meters, and that's basically going to be the whole map on any map. If you run a silencer, it's going to decrease that by 90%, so the four-shot kill range will be like 12 meters, but at 127 meters, that's going to be longer than you can realistically engage on anyone, so you should always assume a four-shot kill unless they're behind a wall or unless you have a silencer or they have kinetic armor or some sort of unusual circumstance like that. Four-shot kills at any range isn't bad, but we should probably talk about a few other things things like the headshot multiplier, which is 1.1x, same as it is on almost all the guns in this game, and unfortunately that makes it useless at all ranges. At close range, that's going to turn your 30 damage into 33, which is still a four shot kill, and at long ranges, if you somehow engage at that range, that's going to take your 22 damage and turn it into 24, which is surprisingly still going to be a five shot kill, so headshots are useless at all ranges. There is no reason whatsoever to go, with head to go for headshots with the ding so I would only recommend going for them if you're camo hunting or something like that. Rate of fire is 720 rounds per minute, which is highest in its class, not counting the 48 dredge. The 48 dredge is a little bit different because it's burst fire or whatever, but compared to the three fully automatic light machine guns that we have in Black Ops 3, this one fires the fastest. This is the exact same speed as the CUDA. This is about the same as the HVK-30, if I'm not mistaken. It's going to be the same as the MSMC in previous Call of Duty games, and 7 120 RPM is pretty fast for a light machine gun. Unfortunately, it has somewhat slow time to kill though. You would think with the high rate of fire, time to kill would be better, but unfortunately, since it's almost always a four shot kill and the rate of fire isn't like that great, the time to kill ends up being a little bit on the slow side. I don't want you to think it's got like a miserably slow time to kill at all ranges. That's not true. It's just a little bit less than average, which is unfortunate for this weapon. I do think that turns off a lot of people on using it. Thankfully though, like most most of the light machine guns in this game, it has no variation over range because the range is so absurd. I mean, yeah, technically if somebody's sitting on the exact opposite end of the map, it might kill a little bit slower, but realistically you're never going to be in that situation, so I would tell you not to worry about it. It has a fantastic magazine size of 80, and if you run extended mags, that's 112. No complaints there whatsoever, especially with the rate of fire, you'll be burning your bullets quickly, so I'm very glad to have a colossal magazine. Like, you're just... This is, I think, the highest magazine count in the game, except for maybe something like like the scythe so that's very good and generally speaking I would probably run fast mags before I would run extended mags and I don't think either one are really that necessary the iron sights I'm gonna classify as being pretty good they're open they're clear they're easy to use they're definitely very easy to use for close range and they're very easy to use for medium range which is where I'm gonna end up recommending that you use this weapon to begin with unfortunately they're very hard to use at long range not many of the LMGs in this game have good iron sights for long range engagements they're very much so geared for using optics for those range and that's what I would recommend. If you're going to use it at long range, go for optics, though that's not necessarily going to be my recommended class for this weapon. Recoil is high. The Dingo kicks a lot. It shakes a lot, and it's also very inconsistent recoil. It's not predictable. It's not always up. It's not always to one side. It wobbles a lot, and I feel that the recoil is much improved with a grip. The grip is going to be a very essential attachment if you want to use this weapon at anything more than medium range. Stance modifiers, prone crouch, that's also nice. We know that recon sight also helps but I don't really think that recon is going to be the way to go for the dingo. 
The Dingo has a poor hipfire spread, and it is poor, but that's only compared to other weapons. It's the same as most of the other light machine guns. Like, it's not really that bad for its class, but it's bad compared to other weapons. That being said, I am going to say it's not a bad candidate for a laser sight, because as we'll talk about in the recommendation section, I think the Dingo is a very good close quarters combat LMG, and if you're going to use it like that, being able to hipfire with a laser sight definitely isn't going to hurt anything, but that is very much so optional if you have the space for it if you want it or if you just kind of like it and one of the cool things about the dingo and this is where we're getting into where the dingo is good we've talked basically this whole episode about where it's bad we're going to be moving into the good things now it has the same base movement speed as assault rifle so you don't slow down whatsoever while you're using it that's a good thing but all of the other lmgs have that anyway so what makes the dingo special well the dingo has the fastest aim down sights move speed in its class and it's almost as fast as assault rifles and by that i mean when you aim down sights and you want to strafe left and right or move forward or backward it moves faster when aiming down sights than any of the lmgs in this class by a mile like especially compared to like the gorgon which is very popular but it has very fast aim down sights movement speed which is very good handling it's easier to kind of corner check people in close quarters combat and stuff like that and this is truly the strength of the dingo and that's a very unusual strength for an lmg but especially when you combine this with a stock you can move very very quickly with it and sidestep people very very effectively Aim down sights time is 333 milliseconds, which is the fastest in class for light machine guns. Fastest ADSing LMG, which means you can snap aim with it better than any of the other LMGs. And because these two things are already good, I'm going to recommend quick draw grip and stock just to make them better. You would think that if they're good, you don't amplify that, but I really want to take this weapon and amplify what it's good at and max it out. So I'm going to run quick draw and stock on mine because I'm going to snap aim really quickly and I'm going to be able to corner check really well. And if I'm really feeling squirrely, I might add a laser sight to hip fire. Reload time is 6.75 seconds, which is the fastest in the light machine gun class, but it's still slow, right? Like, yeah, it's faster than, say, the 48 dredge, but that's like saying that I can run faster than a turtle. It's not bragging by it a whole lot. It's still very slow reloading, so do be careful when you reload. For my, for my money, I think fast mags is better than extended mags. Unfortunately, it only has a medium wall penetration factor, which is the same as assault rifles and submachine guns, so not so great, but thankfully it's still easy easy to wall bang with because you've got 80 rounds and you can just spray through the wall. We will eventually re review LMGs that have high wall penetration factors. Trust me, these first two are just kind of unusual. And I think that now this is the opinion part of the in-depth. It seems like the Dingo is designed to be like a close quarters combat light machine gun. It has by far the best handling in the class. It's got good movement speed. It aims down sights quickly. It sprays quickly. That makes it a little bit easier for hip firing and stuff like that. You can ADS move faster than any of the other light machine guns. And it really seems to be geared toward close quarters combat more than any other LMG in the game. So I would recommend this for smaller maps or if you like to play on objectives as an LMG player. As an LMG player, not many of you are probably jumping on hills or carrying flags or, you know, scoring an uplink or anything like that. But if you are an LMG player and you want to take an LMG out very offensively, very close quarters combat and juggle objectives and do stuff like that, the Dingo is going to be the LMG for you. Or in just like tiny maps like Combine or Nuketown or anything like that, the Dingo is going to largely outperform any of the other ones that have too slow a rate of fire or too slow a handling properties. Unfortunately, the weak side of this weapon is is that it's time to kill is not very good. No matter how you cut it, the, the mathematical pure time to kill, the thing that determines what kills the enemy the fastest, not so great. All the other light machine guns outperform it. The 48 dredge kills faster. The Gorgon, if you don't miss, God forbid if you miss, kills faster. The BRM kills faster. It's just the slowest killing LMG in the game, and it's not even that competitive with assault rifles. So not so spectacular on that front, but I still think it has viability for being a close quarters combat LMG and an absolute bullet hose up close. I have two recommended classes for you. They're kind of opposite. Class number one, I'm going to recommend just with quick draw and stock. You just run quick draw and stock. That amplifies the two best things about the gun, makes them better, and get close. Get up in people's faces. You won't need foregrip because you're going to be too close to people to just you know worry about that kind of thing. You won't need optics because you're going to be close to people. And I think that this class will work very well for most of you. However, if you want a little bit more range on your dingo, if you're not super comfortable, 
comfortable getting up in people's faces, then I would recommend a more traditional LMG class flak jacket so you can't get grenaded. Quick draw, foregrip, and stock, same as before. Oh well, no, quick draw and stock, same as before. But we'll also run foregrip and optics so that it's easier to shoot people at long ranges because both of those have one for target acquisition and one to cut recoil. That's going to make it much easier. As for what specialist you should use, I strongly recommend an aggressive specialist. Somebody like Ruin or somebody like the, the Ripper, the Spectre ability, or just kind of something like Glitch or maybe Overdrive, something like uh, Vision Pulse, uh, even Active Armor. Any kind of special ability that allows you to get up in people's faces, that allows you to move faster, play aggressive, that kind of thing, that is the specialist that's going to work best for the Dingo, because what you really want to amplify is your mobility and speed, and you just kind of want to bounce around and being an annoying target and dump bullets into people faster than they can react, and that's kind of how you want to play the Dingo. Guys, that is all for this in depth episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode was on the BRM LMG, and the next one we're going to be talking about the monstrous Gorgon two-shot LMG. Drifter out.